Okay, we're reviewing uh, for the test tomorrow 2.1 through 2.3. Uh, first five problems deal with number properties, and numbers four and five we're writing an equivalent variable expression. All right, so you've had a few minutes now. Let's, uh, let's talk about number one. What do you see with number one? What's changed? What's changed? The, the order changed. So what property would that be? The commutative property. Guys, that's just something that you have to have memorized. You've got to know that's commutative property. Number two, I'm adding zero, so what property is that? Identity. Identity. Very good. Identity property. What about number three? It's associative because notice within the parentheses I have more than one term, uh, and I'm changing the grouping, associative. Okay? Uh, number four. Now, I'm writing an equivalent variable expression, so I, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the outside term by every term inside parentheses. I cannot stress it enough. You have to pay attention to the signs of each individual term. That will really kill your grade tomorrow if you don't pay attention to those signs. Okay, so with that being said, does anybody think they know the answer to number four? Fallon? You got it. What is it? Very good. So 7m minus 35. Okay? Now, if you said 7m plus negative 35, is that still right? It is. Okay? You just have to put parentheses around it. So you could say 7m plus negative 35 Technically, 35 is still negative. You just have to put parentheses to se separate the double sign. Now, I prefer this way, all right, but either way would be correct. What about number five? What about number five, John and Dad? Negative 15a minus 9. Very good. Negative 15a minus 9. Or they could have said negative 15a plus negative 9. That would be fine, too. All right, so writing an equivalent variable expression. Now we're going to do three more. Just like this. Uh, on your test tomorrow, you've got six of these. All right, so this is a very large part of your grade uh, tomorrow, of your test grade. Go ahead and work these three problems. All right, Emily, what's number six? Um, that's number six? Oh, that's a B. That's a B. Plus four B. You gotta have a variable. Guys, that is so clearly a B. Come on. That is a B. All right. Hey, you can debate with me all day long. It's a B. Negative 30 minus 8B. All right, what about number 7? Uh, Samantha. Very good. 12 minus 18Z. What about number 8? Cole? Very close, plus 5 what? Very good, negative 20 plus 5x. Now, here's what you need to remember on number 8. What is understood in front of the x? A 1. A 1. So negative 5 times negative 1 gives me a positive 5. That's why it's positive. Okay? So you got to remember, you don't have to write that negative 1 in front of the x, but just remember that's understood. Okay, so using the distributive property, that's very important. Now you have two of these on your test tomorrow where you have to find the perimeter of a rectangle and the perimeter of a triangle. Use your formulas to find the perimeter. Go. Okay, say the formula with me. P equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So make your substitutions. The length and the width need to be inside the parentheses. Now what do you have to do? Distributive property. 2 times 2x gives me what? 4x. Oh, sorry, hold on. Okay. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus, what is 2 times 4x? 8x. Now, can you simplify anything? What can you simplify? 4x and 8x. Can you add them all together? 
No, you can only add your x's together to give us 12x plus 4 units. What is my, who got that right? Okay, good, good, much, much better. What is my formula to find area of a rect or perimeter of a rectangle? What is it? Just tell me. A plus B plus C. So what does that mean? It means add all of my sides together. I just so happen to have the variable A that I'm solving with. That's okay. All right, so now I'm solving and I'm adding three terms that have an A. What is 2A plus 2A plus 7A? What is it? 11A plus 3 units. 11A plus 3 units. Who got that one right? Okay, good, good. You have two of these on your test tomorrow. Now, probably the most difficult part of your test tomorrow is going to be a combination of combining like terms and using the distributive property. Okay, so I want you to solve these three. I understand that these are maybe a little tougher and more challenging. Um, they're similar to the questions on your test. I'm not going to lie. These questions, they're not the easiest, but I know you can do them. Okay, so just apply your number properties where you can. That makes it a little easier. And use your rules for signs. Same sign, add and keep, different sign, subtract and take. Make sure you apply your rules for positive and negative numbers, and you should be fine. Okay, number 11. I need to combine my like terms. You can do this mental math, okay? This part, you do not necessarily have to show work. So I see people pumping their fists because they're excited. That's fine, okay? But be careful. Make sure you don't make a mental math error. Negative 5 minus 2 is what? Negative 7y, very good. And then 8 minus 12 is? Negative 4. Now, did anybody catch something on number 12? Oh, sorry. Did anybody catch something on number 12? What did you catch, Andrew? Um, 3x and negative 3x. Very good. My opposites. All right. Now that I've canceled out my opposites, the only x term that's left is negative 5x. So I just write that in my answer. Now I need to just combine these three numbers. What is 4 minus 8 minus 3? Negative 7. Okay, and that's my answer. Now, what do I do first on number 13? What's first on number 13, Jonathan? You multiply 3 by y and 3. Very good. And since 3 is positive, it's 3y plus 9. Now, I can combine like terms. What is negative 4y plus 3y? Negative y. And then what's negative 20 plus 9? Negative 11. All right, almost done. we got two more. Okay, so now I want you to evaluate these expressions. Number 15, uh, there is one like this on your test tomorrow. Okay, um, it's probably one of the more complicated. You need to use brackets because you'll be solving within the parentheses and then... Uh, simplifying, you'll know more what I'm talking about in a minute, but um, uh, just go ahead and substitute and solve. Substitute and solve. You can solve this time because you know what the variable is equal. All right, what's number 14? We make our substitutions. Okay, we got to multiply what's inside the brackets, inside the parentheses. What'd you get for your answer? What'd you get? What did you get? Did you get it? Negative 54? Okay, because I've got to evaluate, and this is the question that I just got, evaluate this exponent first before you multiply. 3 squared is 9, and then 3 times 9 is 27. And then 27 times negative 2 is negative 54. All right, who got that one right? Good. These are tough. These are tough. Okay, you got to pay attention to those signs and order of operations. Order of operations is important. So on number 15, we substitute. The reason we use brackets is because we had to multiply this term also. Okay, and then we've got minus 3 on the outside. Okay, so now what do we do next? 
It's all about a step-by-step -step process. Do not try to do this all mental math. What do we do next, guys? 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 3. Now what? Now what? Negative 4 and 3 makes negative 1. Now what do I do? Multiply. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 minus 3 makes negative 1. All right, following your order of operations, following your signs. Who got it right? Okay. All right, good. Awesome. Good. That was a tough one. Guys, I saved the hardest one for last. Number 15 was not easy. All right, that's okay. All right, so good job if you got that right. Uh, pretty much covers everything on your test tomorrow except converting uh, the units just like we did on the back of your quiz. So just make sure you know feet to miles, miles to feet, inches to yards, uh, inches to feet, feet to yards, milliliters to liters, um, milligrams to grams, how many uh, milligrams are in a gram? 1,000, okay? So just know some of those general ones. It's, it's not overly complicated on your test tomorrow, and you should be good.